Assalamualaikum Sayyidi Walaikum Assalam Sayyidi, in, a, in one of your recent videos on TikTok on jinns, you had said jinns don't die. Many people were commenting online that they do die. Can you please clarify? Yeah, the problem is that people don't listen to the actual video. So if, if people listen to the video, it said that don't die in the way that we die on the lifespan that we die. So the whole video and in that same clip it describes and other people commenting, you didn't hear what he said, he said they don't die like we die, that their lifespans are two, three thousand years. So that's, that's a problem is that a lot of people like to make comments and they judge a book by its cover. They look at the thumbnail and think they already know what's in the talk, maybe because they've heard a thousand talks from YouTube thinking everything is the same. But our, our thumbnails have pretty much nothing to do with the talks. So the thumbnails are meant to capture people. But the, the gist of the talk and the depth of the talk is something that you have to clearly hear and then hear again. And that is in itself a isharat, a, a guidance on how sort of naive people are and that they're so superficial that when it comes to haqqaiqs and realities people not really ready for that. They're all interested in, uh, in the shirk al khafi the hidden shirk with Allah Everybody has now made themselves to be like a judges, like a, a seat of judges where everyone wants to sit and judge good, bad, good, bad, up, down, thumb up, thumb down. They're not really interested in learning any content. Everyone plays a role now in which to judge. And Allah and, and all religions came to judge not for you shall be judged. Means the, the way in which you judge people Allah will hold an account towards that individual. And that's unfortunately with social media the, the, the bulk of the people now, 99% of people they feel the role is to judge. So you'll see in comments and all the videos. It's just judgment, this is not true, this is not true, this is not true. Click on one of those people who say, this is not true and you go to their page and it's motorcycles, they have absolutely nothing. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. to even do with Islam or, or any realities or, or guidance or shaykh or, or alam or anything. They're just saying things and, and making comments. So that's mostly what social media seems to be, is just teaching people how to judge. And those whom are truly searching for gems and pearls and the treasures of the heavens, they have a different character in which they're hungry, they have to have a hunger. That this category of people they feed you but they feed you for the sake of Allah But the people whom come they have to have a hunger. When they have that hunger they're looking for the jewels, they're detecting you know the diamond and the gold and everything. They're not looking for what was wrong, what… what, what went wrong, what was interpreted wrong. Those are like the, the… when we have the foam on the ocean, the majority are like foam on an ocean in which you just take them and they blow away with the wind. Those whom are looking for the jewels, 
they go deeper into every subject. They merely hear these and try to find the link to the actual talk. Remember it's like fishing, so this is supposed to in which to bait you to take a bite because the shaykh is a fisherman he's going to catch some fish, he's going to catch souls with this reality. He's not meant to teach them everything in one video but just merely enough to see if you're going to bite. So they patiently sit there with their stick out and they tell their other students, you know, cast the lines, throw out all these videos and let's see Allah what He sends for fishes to bite because the fishes are souls of people. Which souls are going to be attracted to this reality? Not uh, thinking if you put out a thousand uh, video shares a thousand are coming, no. You're lucky if a hundred come and from that hundred, two, three, four become sincere and, and really want to go into the depth of the reality. So it's not a reality or teaching that is meant for the masses of people. It's meant for the khawas, the, the elite of their souls in which whom Allah has, has given to them an, an interest and a yearning. And based on their good actions and good character they go deeper into the reality. And also the reverse that when the good character leaves and the badness of character comes they leave. And that's not from their cleverness that they leave, it's Allah has expelled them from the course. And that's when they leave and they begin to exhibit all the bad characteristics. And that's the teachings from the shaykh that they teach for the sake of Allah They don't teach for the sake of people. If what they did for the sake of people they would have quit 30 years ago because people by their nature are deceitful. They take and then they throw you out when they're finished with you or they betray you and they exhibit all the treacherous characteristics of a betraying person. And anyone who studies the topic it's, it's the adab of your amir that when you take your allegiance to your shaykh he's your amir. Is the one whom is responsible for you and the betrayal of the emir is a, is, is a high level of betrayal. And the betrayal of students to their teacher and to the way is a very high level betrayal. It's not something small in Allah's eyes and that's the system, the shaykhs teach and the students learn. When the students exhibit bad character Allah expels them from the course. It's not their cleverness they think they're leaving, it's Allah is not pleased with what they do and as a result they begin to withdraw. Their characteristics change, their adab and their manners change and people see the, the manners. So it is not something foreign. When you see somebody exhibiting bad manners, slandering, backbiting a shaykh and ahlul bayt or descendant of Prophet you see how these are called the treacherous and ruinous states of insan. These are not noble, these are not anything to do with the soul, they're even beyond the nafs and they become demonic. So that's, that's, a, that's a very dangerous state in the last days. So also by watching the comments, watching how former students betray and how they act and how people are sort of going all over the place and, and sort of losing their mind, that's a sign of the times that this is a school of adab, this is a school in which everything somebody does you stand back as an observer and say, I wonder if is this from the soul and that's why we gave the talk of the, the who are sitting on the chair. Anything you see or hear from somebody you ask yourself is, uh, I wonder who's sitting on the chair at that time? Is shaitan sitting on that person's chair? Then they have very treacherous and ruinous states of character and, and they do and exhibit very bad characteristics in very holy times and holy months. <laughs> this is not from the soul, the soul would never do such a thing, the soul exhibits the, the character of perfection and that's why we, we said for people to read. These are the stories of awliya, what they say is not taskiyat, 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 awliya, the stories of awliya. 
in which how their whole lives were carrying burdens. That people would throw rocks at them and they would carry the burdens of people. But the people throwing rocks were not of a noble characteristic, they were exhibiting demonic characteristics. And the shaykhs they carry those difficulties means they continue their path, they continue their teaching, they continue their, their mission in which they have to complete regardless of its popularity and regardless of who comes, who gets off the train, who boards the train. And the role of the student is to perfect themselves to noble angelic characteristics. And that's why those three people either their shaitan, their nafs or their soul. That's why that talk is important. So when students start to see the bird box and see the extent of, of insanity, they're given the tools in which to understand that, right? So they watch a nice video of the shaykh, they see horrific comments. Maybe they even see comments now from former students of the way because everyone thinks, oh these people all were part of the way, doesn't matter. The way is very difficult, very few can take the path to its ultimate goal which is sainthood and a high level of a servanthood to the reality of Allah and Prophet Many will lose their path along the way. So when you see the videos and you see the posts and then you begin to see the comments, it's an isharat, it's a guidance for students to say, this is what the shaykh has been teaching. And then look at the comments and you see like very belligerent and sort of angry and, and vulgar and, and sort of off the cuff comments that look like they didn't even watch the video. But they're just commenting and they're commenting on a shaykh, they're commenting on a descendant of Prophet means they have absolutely no fear of Allah. They don't think that, God forbid, what if this guy is connected? What if Allah does like him? Maybe the sign of all his talks would be a little clue for you that somebody up there must love him and keeps him in power for 30 years. And many have come to destroy him and take him down and as long as Allah is happy they're still there. So you, you have, a, have to have a sense of taqwa that if you don't like something like you go to a restaurant if you don't like the food stay quiet, don't eat it, go to the next place you're free to leave. Everyone's it's a vast world you pick up and go wherever you want. But when the people start to exhibit bad characteristics is a very dangerous sign of the times that people have lost their taqwa, they lost their God consciousness, they lost their ability to discern right from wrong. And it was uh, similar to seeing somebody during the protests where they were pouring gas on themselves and you're watching in these protests they pour gas on themselves and they would burn themselves. What kind of horrific state was that? That somebody becomes in such a state they lose their ability to have any sense of, of godliness and consciousness that if you don't like something go away, stay quiet, go away. But shaitan's not happy with that. Shaitan is only happy when he takes the person and decimates and destroys them in which they put gas all over themselves and then they light themselves on fire. So what kind of state is that? That the person is now indulging in acts that may anger Allah for a very long period of time, that those things are not forgiven and they're not forgotten. The words that people use, the characteristics in which they exhibit and their backbiting and slandering. They're, they're not fearful of everything they have in life coming that will be a punishment because Allah declares war against anyone who comes against one of Allah's servants. War from Allah is different and more powerful than war from mankind. You know on this earth you do something wrong and men come after you. In Allah's way you do something wrong Allah comes after you. 
So which do people want? And that's the danger. So when you see these comments and you see the characteristics of what we thought were students and, and people of the way, it's a isharat of the sign of the times. Look they're making war with Allah, look how they're acting. They're throwing gas all over themselves. For what? Go away. You don't like something? Turn the page. You don't like the video? Go to the next video that maybe you want to see with everything inappropriate is more appealing to you. Everyone has a choice. Nobody's put in a chair and their eyes are forced open and that they have to take the knowledge and, and, and keep the good manners. You have a choice and the choice is with good manners walk away. But when they're possessed by shaitan they don't walk away, they actually ignite and incinerate themselves. And every word they say and every typing and every phone call they make and every slanderous action they do is just more gas on top of their heads until the day that Allah ignites that and there's nothing but burning and people are enemies and the worst enemy for themselves. They don't even need an outside shaitan, their own shaitan is doing enough, enough damage. And that becomes a, a very sad sign of the times and that's why we described that years ago about that movie, that the energy and the frequency would be such that people would be completely off, something is very off with people. The, either the, the shots that they took within their body that completely is changing them, they're like a metamorphosis. The something within them is changing, their ability to have patience is changing. There'll be a time in which people will be ravaging on the street and eating people. The violence that can be imagined, can be imagined. And these are things that they have put into people to change their characteristic and that they become like haywan, like animals. And we said before Mawlana Shaykh's teaching is that upon these, this anger of Allah would be so extreme that Allah will give the command of all His creation to eat and son. Where He says, not an ant, not a roach, not a spider will, will not have received the command from Allah to eat them because of Allah's anger and qadab upon creation because of the, the bad characteristics they exhibit. So this way of good manners is teaches us, where do people think they can hide when their actions are bad? Who is it that you will hide from when, when you've angered Allah, angered Prophet angered all those whom are above and, and below that are the guardians of this way? If you anger them, where, where is it that you plan on hiding from Allah's anger? So this is not a time in which to exhibit bad character but it's a time in which to exhibit the best of character. Means that to remain silent, to remain peaceful, to remain good and good character. If you have nothing good to say, say nothing and go your way and try your best to say good things and positive things. So that Allah's anger not be upon you, your family and your descendants. So this is a, is, a, is a very difficult time for people but you see that shaitan is with them and uh, igniting and incinerating everyone and the time should be much worse. External elements will begin to open and uh, many things will happen. People will go to their banks and the banks will be closed. They won't have access to their accounts, they won't have access to their funds, they won't have access to food. Mawlana Shaykh described the time will come where people will be digging bodies to eat from the grave and people will be passing the graves of hadith of Prophet and looking to the dead and say that, I wish I was like you, that I was in the earth and, and dead because this life on this earth became such that it's so extreme. So when we know that those are the times that await us, then those whom have guidance, they're guided, do your best, go out and serve people, do good and, and, and be generous, be, be, be kind and loving and exhibit the best of character. In the face of everything you don't like, exhibit good character because judge not for you shall be judged. If you think you have the right to judge and backbite and slander, because you think you, you found something you don't like in somebody, 
my goodness imagine all the things you have within you and Allah begins to tell other humans, now go and destroy that person. Because as you're judging Allah will say, is that how we're going to do this? No problem. Then these five things I don't like in you, I'm going to send these people to fix it at your home. And they come after you and they begin to go after everything of the person. So it's like life is like a mirror, as you do shall be done to you. So then what's the best thing to do if you know that that's the situation that Allah is going to bring? Go to feed people, give them water, give them food, give them hope. When people who are not doing anything give hope towards goodness, say the Prophet loves you, come towards love, come towards good manners, towards good character. So when a day of hardship comes and you face one of these merciless beasts that Allah will let roam upon the earth, it's a warfare, Allah will release men whom have no mercy in their heart. But should they come across one whom Allah loves and their life they dealt with people with mercy and they did all the good things Allah asked from them, then Allah makes that servant not to even see that person so that not to exhibit harm upon Allah's favourite servants. This is the time of faith and this is the way of faith and that's the danger that in this Ramadan the, the gate of mercy people are doing very crazy things in the ten days of mercy. And judge not for you should be judged for however you deal with people Allah will deal more severely with you. So we pray that Allah inspire us to goodness and that's the way of the heavens. We don't even need somebody to teach us that, it's common sense, do good. Be good and you should see good, do good. Be good and you should see good. Be bad, do bad, you're going to see bad, guaranteed with this earth and, and this condition it is right now. InshaAllah you know, Allah help and, and uh, support people and, and give us the best of character inshaAllah. Mm. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What can we do if we've lost our way and have ruinous traits of betrayal, how can our behavior be redeemed? Well, do good immediately, repent and go onto your carpet and put your head to your forehead to the ground and repent and ask that Allah accept your repentance and uh, from that moment do good deeds and ask uh, people for their forgiveness and uh, ask Allah forgiveness, Prophet forgiveness and do your good deeds and know that shaitan is pouring gas on your head. I don't know if anyone saw it during the Vietnam wars and, and these, these times when these people were protesting, it was horrific that shaitan play with them so much you know that Islam is the, is the light. And the whole reality of Islam is to be aware that shaitan is playing. And when shaitan is playing with people and, and destroying them, he actually in, inspires them to burn themselves which is horrific, horrific. As if they didn't even need the azab of the grave, they took the azab of dunya. So this, this is you know, this is a dangerous, dangerous time. That's why Prophet said, don't leave me for a blink of an eye to myself. And that's why we gave the talks of who's sitting on the chair because it's very easy. You don't need Islamic terminology, you don't need to have a fatwa from a ten-year-old mufti. It's very simple, anything you do go back look at it and say, I wonder who was sitting on my chair. If it was d disgusting it was shaitan, if it was nasty and bad it was your nafs and shaitan. It was amazing and humble, it was your soul. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa How to stop silently judging others? We yeah, have the zikrs, the meditation and, and catch yourself. As soon as you hear yourself whispering and judging make istighfar and be careful and, and that's why I said make a post-it note on these talks. You know put a post-it note in the mirror of your bathroom, judge not for you shall be judged. 
Your bathroom, why? Because shaitan's khutbah is in there. Most people are learning in the toilet, not on their sajada and in their carpet. They go there in the bathroom, immediately shaitan teaches them. They come out with a, thinking they have a wisdom, they'll take that knowledge throughout the day and they won't recognize where it came from. It didn't come, that khatir didn't come from your sajada and meditating. It came from when you were in the bathroom and he gave you a khutbah, he planted an arrow of fitna into your heart. And that's why we seek refuge in Allah before entering, keep your head covered, keep your taweez upon yourself. You're entering into his house to do what you have to do and hope that he doesn't attack you there and teach you. So this is a big time war against shaitan. As soon as you feel that you're whispering, you immediately catch it and see most likely it came from the bathroom when you were entering into that facility. The whispering began, the, the khatir and the thoughts were sent into the heart. If you accepted them and took them in, as soon as you wash come out and begin to make your istighfar and pray always Salatul Wudu so that to seal yourself and your washing. So it's a full-time battle. So if you ask me instead of the words that if, if shaitan throws three arrows that are on fire on me, what should I do? That he threw an arrow, three of them they're burning on me right now, what should I do shaykh? Well, take them out and, and put the water on them to take that fire off. And that water and fire off is istighfar and salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad and identify and recognize what you're thinking and the danger of how you're thinking where it's going to set you, it's going to set you ablaze and on fire if you let that thought go anymore, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how does a truthful person live their life in this world of Ashura and Karbala? First we have to hope that we're truthful people. So we first have to recognize we're actually zalim and jahat. So if the assumption that is that we're truthful, I think we gave a little bit too much credit for ourselves already. So if you hear me start the talk, it's not that I'm a sadiq and I'm siddiqeen <laughs> and I have to call ajis or da'ifun, miskeen or zalim or jahal. So copy your shaykh and, and determine that you're zalim and jahal. So if anyone talks bad about you, you already told Allah, I'm zalim and jahal, so what am I supposed to do? So we're not truthful servants. With our ignorance we use the example of truthful servants for their good character, right? So Imam Hussain salam, he wasn't supposed to be victorious in your standards in Karbala. His real victory is that he knew he was going to be slaughtered. The companions and the existing people of Medina had all visions and dreams that you're going to be slaughtered there, at least don't take the children. He said, he's the, the Sayyid the shuhada, the one whom sees all the seers, he knows exactly who's going to pass away and he knew exactly what he was stepping into. That gives the excellence of character. That would you take your whole family to a destination in which you knew you were all going to be slaughtered, they would be slaughtered first, you would witness their slaughtering and, and not buckle in your knees and, and faint and pass out and in the end you would give your life. It's not even heard of in any battle, no great general, no great soldier ever took their entire family into a battlefield and it's just not heard of in, in, human, in human history. So that's the miracle of Sayyidina Imam al Husayn is that to, to know his fate and accept it and step into it. And that's what makes so heroic and that as a result he understood what Allah wanted from him, go in, into the field and die and show people how to die. And as a result of that dying carry their burdens and intercede for them. So this is the example that these great souls, immense, immensely great souls for all of eternity will be left an example upon this earth. 
So we can't assume that we are truthful people and everybody's bad. So this is the, the system of, of wilayat and saying to it is then do good, do good and uh, be good and you'll see good. But people are not good, people are, are rotten and they're going to deceive you and destroy you and throw everything at you and throw rocks at you and that's okay because Allah's with you inshaAllah. And they only know how to throw rocks. You know the, the, the monkey at the zoo only knows how to throw his poo because he's not yet insan, he's haywan. So when somebody is a haywan and they're not an insan, insan means you've been trained in how to have beatific character. If you don't have that training you're, you're haywan, you're a monkey in a zoo. Because everything is just like a show, yeah if you go to the monkey in the zoo he keep taking his waist and he keep throwing it at the audience. And then everybody on the outside is like laughing, ha <laughs> look at this baboon what he's doing. Same thing. So when we exhibit these bad characteristics it's a monkey in a zoo and everybody's just watching. So when insan wants to rise they say, no I have to have the characteristics of uh, angelic characteristics of goodness, of, of humanity and to be human. And then they exhibit good, they purify themselves, they live a life of service and people's jobs are to cast their stones. And Allah is their support, Allah is the one whom inspires people to support them, Allah is the one whom holds them up. Although they walk through the valley of death they fear not for Allah is with them. Everyone comes and thinks they can take down awliya. So if you've ever studied their lives many people came that host them, bring them in, do everything for them and then throw them out on the street thinking, I will collapse this person. And immediately Allah sends somebody else because it's a barakah from Allah that He gives a ni'mat to somebody that I want to give this blessing for you and I want you to host this man, I want you to take care of this shaykh, I want you to do all these things. And that's a blessing from Allah If you don't want it there's 10,000 others waiting that Allah will inspire them. So this individual threw the shaykh out and immediately other people jumped right in like a cushion and we'll take care of everything, we'll put you where you're supposed to be, we'll make sure everything that happens. Means that nobody takes and stops Allah's train and that's, that's the miracle of tariqah. Everyone comes thinks that they can stop it but no they're nothing, they're no one. That Allah is the force in the engine, the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad is their fuel and their safeguarding. So that's why we said read the lives of, of saintly people and the path of saintly people, those whom inherit from saintly people. And it's the same exact system, you do good, your actions are good and you know you have good characteristic and alhamdulillah you see good even in the midst of fires because that was the fire of Sayyidina Ibrahim, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنِ بَعْدًا وَالسَّلَامًا Now we're saying the fire is going to be much more intense where people won't know what happened to their money. If they listen to guidance well they're gonna be a little bit safer. They won't know where they're, they're gonna get food, if they listen to guidance they're gonna know and they'll be having inshaAllah the ability to eat. So this is an immensely important time in which to hold tight because now they enter into these immense, immense storms and tornadoes. If during the practice everybody is going uh, haywire then imagine when, when their party begins, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah As we enter the eighth day of Ramadan and near the end of the first ten days of Bab al-Rahmah, how do we know if we've entered that Bab? You're still here and you didn't do anything bad. That was the whole talk, so you gotta listen to the talk. So the talk was all about the ten days of Rahmah and based on good, good character. If in these 10 days you did things that would have voided you of rahmah and mercy and entered into Allah's anger 
then the next ten days is going to be a little bit difficult for you because the maghfirah means you require cleansing. So this is the Babur Rahmah, is the mercy is that Allah made your ten days and uh, this night of power, tonight is a night of power. So there are the, the four nights of power in this month which are extremely important. So this night of power is a dress from Allah's rahmah that you, you gain the… what was the rahmah of Allah You gain the presence of Prophet So did you think in these ten days your actions warranted your nearness to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Did you attack a Muhammadiyoon? Did you come against the way of the heavens? Did you exhibit bad characteristics? against the love and the ishq of Prophet his companion and family. So if we did those types of things then you can assume you distance yourself from Prophet that would immediately make you understand you distance from Allah's rahmah. Prophet is the rahmah of Allah If the actions of the servant are not pleasing to Prophet very tangible. So we, we don't need to guess, oh you know like this was like this was a mercy, this was mercy, I think Allah will accept this is mercy. No just think that whatever you did if Prophet was with you and happy with it. If he was there and he's happy with you then alhamdulillah you did a good uh, ten days of rahmah. Now the next ten days is maghfirah because Prophet begins praying for you and your forgiveness. Why? What was the rule for Allah's maghfirah? If you want Allah's forgiveness and you, you keep calling out to Allah for forgiveness, what Allah is telling you? Go to Prophet Jauka wa astaghfirullah wa astaghfirukum rasul that go to the presence of Prophet and in that presence ask Allah's forgiveness and then ask the forgiveness of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's all making sense now. So the ten days is if you came near to Prophet he made the fasting that you could enter. Many people say, oh, I can't do it, I can't do the fasting and then they began cursing, backbiting and slandering means you, uh, you're way far away from the, the, the khirqah and the presence of Prophet So how do you know that for sure Shaykh? Well because he sat with his best friend in the masjid and as soon as Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was being attacked Prophet was smiling. The man was cursing at Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, yelling, 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 yelling and Prophet was smiling. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq decided to start to answer, answer him back. And Prophet got up, walked out. That right now that's the proof of the way that do you think you can do and exhibit bad? That wasn't even bad characteristic, it just started to give a jawab and an answer with the goodness and sweetness of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. But for the dalil and the proof that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq ran out sad and upset that how I upset you. It said that when he was angry with me, you were smiling. When I gave a job, I gave an answer, you got upset and you walked out. It says, because when he was doing these bad things to you, angels were dressing you and blessing you. And as soon as you took the case, those angels went and then it became something different and I can't stand in that presence. But it was for us a lesson from their perfect and beautiful characteristics to the nastiness of our dunya. That's an example that Prophet is not with those whom exhibit bad character and slander and do all sorts of horrific things and think that Prophet is with them. If Prophet is not with you nor is the mercy of Allah That's why this is a Muhammadan way, make your salawats, make your khidmat, do your service, exhibit the, the acts if people are, are not kind to you. Stay quiet and make your salawat so that Prophet is happy with you. Know that when, when the thorns are thrown at you, blessings are coming. 
means that when difficulty is sent upon you that these are the dressings and the blessings of the heavens for those whom exhibit good character. Allah dresses them with a rahmah because Prophet is happy with them. As a result of that presence now you enter into the 10 days of forgiveness in which who's forgiving? That you're asking forgiveness in the presence of Prophet asking Allah's forgiveness and then asking Prophet forgiveness that whatever harm I'm doing and badness I'm doing to the light that you gave to me, I'm asking your forgiveness and that your nazar and your nazar karam, your blessed lights be upon me and that give me good character amongst wherever your light is and to whomever you've bestowed that light. I keep a tashrif and a respect upon my head. I may not like what they do and exhibit all these Muhammadan lights and all these awliya, we don't have to like what they do. You have to respect the light of Prophet And as a sign of that respect you exhibit the best of character for the nobility of that light and the beatific reality of the light of Prophet inshaAllah. this Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.